and go. My name is Kevin Van Eckeren. Please visit thestateoflogic.com. But you, oh no, let's start over. That was horrible. That's fine. <laughs> Do it. You um, know, rock it. My name is Kevin Van Eckeren, and you are listening to Vroom Vroom Veer with Jeff Smith. Well done, sir. Thank you. Awesome. All right. I'm going to hit stop and then I'll be right back. Are you ready to thoughtfully steer away from your revved up, frenzied, and far too often scripted life? Then welcome to Vroom Vroom Veer with Jeff Smith, where he guides you down the road differently traveled by sharing unique experiences with guests who have managed to shift away from a life stuck on cruise control and veered their way into a more authentic and fulfilling one in all sorts of interesting and kind of remarkable ways. Get ready to Vroom Vroom Veer with your differently traveled road chauffeur, Jeff Smith. Yay. Thank you so much for b- being on Vroom Vroom Veer and welcome to the show. How's it going? It's going great. Thanks for having me, Jeff. I uh, really appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate you being here. So let's talk about a little bit what you've got going on uh, at your business and that's at uh, www.itrekkers.com. So uh, you started that back in 2014. Uh, what What are you most excited about in your business today? i uh, Great question. Uh, What I'm most excited about is creating memories in the great outdoors. So the whole concept of (laughs) yeah, Yeah. the the whole concept of what we do is we make uh, the outdoors accessible for those who don't typically get to go out, and uh, we do that through a uh, managed network of outdoor guides providing what we call you know entry level outdoor activities, you know fishing charters, camping, hiking. And, uh, you know, kayak and paddling tours and fishing. Uh, and Sounds we do like that across the entire state of Florida. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a ton of fun. It, you know, I'm lucky enough to do something that I'm incredibly passionate about. Yeah. Um, we, have, we have an amazing mission, which is just a, you know, it's threefold. It's one, help get people outdoors with eye trekkers. Mm-hmm. Two, help get people outdoors without us. And three, right. educate about the outdoors. Because really, you know, we're, we're your vehicle when you don't know what you're doing. Uh, but if you know what you're doing, but you have a couple questions or you have some interesting thoughts on things, uh, right. we've got a really robust blog out there that just ha- kind of helps provide, you know, 50 camping hacks with duct tape, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love that. That sounds yeah. like a blast. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, uh, following one of my hacks right now. I'm using duct tape for a blister that I have on my finger. Oh, nice. Um, and people don't realize that uh, you can actually take a little square of duct tape, put it on the big piece of duct tape. Okay. And and so that the little square is not sticky. And then you okay. can use that on your blister and wrap the rest in the duct tape, which creates, you know, a moist free uh, area for, for any blister to heal. Oh, nice. I like it. Very innovative. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> did you come up with that one out of need or did you find it on Google? Uh, no, actually, I came up with that one out of need. But yeah, I, yeah. I, I you know, it. eventually I realized I wasn't the only person u- uh, using that. So, sure, perfect. Uh, but duct tape something that we never leave home without when we're out in the woods. Good idea. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. See, I grew up uh, in Michigan. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, then I, when I, I left like when I was 18, but when I was a kid, uh, my parents started in a tent camping and then and then got one of those StarCraft pop-up campers and then moved through the different sizes of the towable campers, right? So I grew up doing all of what you're talking about, like camping, uh, usually in, you know, like a, a park, you know, where you get your assigned space sort of situation. But then there was like canoeing and boating and water skiing and swimming and hiking and mini bikes and you just about everything you think you might want to do outside in the woods. Yeah. And I love campfires. <laughs> yeah, but, but, you know, it sounds like you come from a pretty outdoorsy background, which right. is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, I, what, I miss it now. What? Well, that's the problem, right? Right. So, so, so when's the last time you got outdoors? Like, like really like the last time you, you took off and, and did it. It's well now I, does does say like going for a walk out by the mountain by my house? Does that count? 
Uh, it does to me. To okay. Be uh, <laughs> it, it counts because you're 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 doing it. You're getting yeah. outdoors. Right. You're experiencing a unique and special feeling that you yourself can only experience the way yeah. that you There's feel something. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, I just uh, I just moved from Los Angeles to uh, Las Vegas, and. The, the place where I'm renting uh, my house is like right next to a mountain. So as long as the morning weather is cool enough, I can go out and walk by my mountain. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. I know. You can't do that in L.A. Where I lived in L.A., if I wanted to take a walk, it was like very urban. You know what I'm saying? Got it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There's something about Which, being out in nature, though. It's good for your brain, right? My goodness. Well, I, I mean, it's got so many health benefits. Like, if you think about it, it's yeah. it's where we came from. Right. You know, we were so much more in connection, um, both mentally and physically, with the land. Right. Um, and, and now we are basically putting all of ourselves in these glass towers, which, yeah. I, you know, and I get it, and I'm definitely not against the urbanization um, and the way that our society is moving. What I do want to do, though, is make sure we get back to those roots enough yeah. so that we maintain our own mental sanity. For sure. And you know, with the various health benefits from just vitamin D, being outside, right. to – uh, you know, like that little giddy feeling that some get, you know, right in the middle of their chest when they, you know, are walking through a forest by themselves or with their friends to, to just connecting, you know, mm, mm -hmm. there's, there, 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 there's something really unique about connecting in the outdoors around a fireplace or on a boat and on a sandbar somewhere, right. or just, just there's something about that, um, that hits individuals differently. Right. That needs to continue. Yeah. No, uh, really. Because, you know. Yeah. 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 Uh, when I was a kid and I still have this feeling like uh, there's nothing like uh, sitting around a fire. It's way better than TV. <laughs> it, it, it really is. I mean, you yeah. can literally stare into a fire for hours, for hours and it's constantly changing. Yeah. And, and, and that drives kind of the mindfulness that a lot of people are looking for. It's just it's that right. ability to. For some, it's to disconnect um, and let your thoughts kind of carry you where they go. Right. Um, yeah. You know, we we are at our most creative in the outdoors. No, for uh, real. And, that, yeah. and uh, it's not only real, it's scientifically proven. Right. Uh, which is pretty neat. So, <laughs> uh, it, you know, since, since I was a kid, uh, actually my first memory, like I literally like my first personal memory is – camping at the age I think I was like four and a half or just turned five yeah. uh, with my father on a riverbed um, where you know we waded out into the middle of this river and there was like a sandbar there and we camped there whoa um, and, 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 <laughs> that's pretty and it was adventurous a, yeah, and, yeah. And it, let's hope there's no it, flash flood it, true story I'm <laughs> I'm sure he did his own homework at yeah, the time yeah right uh, and that there was no weather in the forecast, but right, uh, right. it's just, it's just absolutely amazing to, that that's literally my first memory. Mm. Well, I, funny enough, it also goes with the, on the way back, listening to the grapevine, you know, I'm going through the grapevine, <laughs> yada, yada. And so yeah, that song that's there too is, in that first yeah, memory, it, it, right? Yeah. It's yeah. burned in my brain, <laughs> uh, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So when that raisin commercial came out, you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Yep, it was kind of like uh, drawing me outside. Yeah, and maybe wanting to eat some raisins. <laughs> Who, knows? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? So let's talk a little bit about uh, your journey before you started your business. So where did you grow up? Did you grow up in Florida? Uh, no, actually, I I kind of grew up all over the place. Okay, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. So. Uh, as you got from my last name, I'm actually French, not, okay. not fake French. Like people tell you, yeah, I'm Irish. Oh yeah. Like when did you move here? No, no, no. It was my great grandfather. No, right. like I'm legitimately born in France, wow. in France in a city called Ruby, uh, which is near the Belgian border. Uh, my parents are both French. My grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, everyone is still in France. Wow. Uh, I come from a really large family. We, we immigrated to the U S uh, when I was one. Okay. Uh, my three sisters are born in Atlanta. Okay. And then we went, we went back to France when I was like seven. 
six or seven, mm. um, where I kind of went and did my, my middle school in France, um, and then came back for high school. Okay. Uh, in Atlanta again, wow. uh, from fall, France fall, to Atlanta, that's a bit of a shock. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from Northern France to Atlanta. And then after that, I went to, uh, McGill university in Montreal, Canada for four years, oh, uh, nice. which was You can use your French awesome. again. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean that plus, I mean Montreal is, in my opinion, one of the greatest cities in the world. Yeah. Uh, from its multi multi culturalism to uh, the historical aspects of it, uh, from when it was founded in the 1700s to you know, it's just it's just everything about it is just amazing. Uh, but then after that, went back to Atlanta, uh, where the family was. Got a job at Georgia Pacific, uh, some entry level job with Dixie Food Service. You know, like the cutlery, paper plates, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, worked with them for a couple years, and I uh, joined my dad's uh, industrial bakery in Atlanta. Um, going through a tough divorce at that point, mm. uh, so it's kind of a low, really low point in my life. Uh, high school sweetheart gone wrong type deal. Right. Um, she, I mean, you know, she she was an amazing person, but it's just it just it. it wasn't for us. Mm. Um, and then met uh, a new woman, my, my current wife, Kara, and her and I, one day we decided to quit our, both our paying jobs Whoa. and moved to Costa Rica. <laughs> you know, that, that is more common nowadays than, than one might think. Right. It, 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 I mean, yeah, there are a yeah, lot really of folks is. moving to Costa Rica. It's like the, uh, the getaway for the, uh, remote nomad that there's something about that country and its government and yeah. So, how was Costa Rica? Did you have to learn Spanish? Uh, it well, one Costa Rica was, was amazing. I got yeah. to, you know, spearfish on my lunch break and Whoa. hit the what? waves in the evening, and nice. you know, you know that kind of stuff. And sure. uh, I was in real estate, so I really got to discover the the uh, countryside, which is amazing. Um, uh, but you know, Spanish is pretty close to French, so okay. Um, yeah, I I learned Spanish. Um, and uh, whenever I didn't know a word, I would use a French word and throw an A, E, or O at the end. <laughs> and uh, That always it, worked, it, huh? It usually yeah, worked. Pre right? Pretty much. Okay. Um, which was neat. Yeah. Um, but actually, you know, my wife and I, our first child, Olivia, is born in Costa Rica. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, we had, uh, we had Olivia down there, and that was an awesome experience. Um, and just uh, – you know, just living it up. And then uh, with a child, we decided to move back to the U.S., Richmond, Virginia, where her family was from. Okay. Um, That's I a bit of a it. culture shock. Yeah, still. Yeah. Richmond, I liked Virginia. it less. <laughs> Very um, urban kind of situation. Yeah. Well, it's just. Turnpike. I don't know. It, it just wasn't for me. Right. No. Uh, but, uh, you know, I did an MBA there and then I got a job with Capital One. Um, mm, nice. Where, yeah, which is where my love for the customer started. Um, so I, at Capital One, I was uh, doing a lot of the, the analysis work with my team for all of the call centers and contact centers. And then from there, you know, uh, got an opportunity to run a call center in Tampa. And that's how I got here. That's to Tampa. Bay. Well, that's very like. Uh... I don't even know what you'd call that. It's an interesting way to get to Tampa. <laughs> yeah. Via like France and uh, Atlanta and Costa Rica and Richmond, Virginia. Wow. Okay. So you've already been trekking. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, my, my life has been one long trek. Wow. Yeah. Uh, with, uh, with valleys and peaks. Right. If you right, will. Right. Right. Um, so talk about, uh, a little bit about how you came up with the idea for eye trekkers. And so were you still, did you start it while you still were working a job? Uh, technically yes. Okay. So, let's, so <laughs> I got laid off by capital one right. uh, a year after I got down here. Um, and they wanted me to go back to Richmond because my position had just been eliminated here in Tampa where I was running a call center mm. for them. Okay. Um, and I said, guys, you just moved here with two of my, you know, my two kids. Uh, I'm not going back. And they said, well, okay, well, here's a nice package. And in addition, let me give you a cush job that you won't have to do any work for. And hopefully, you know, that helps you out. And we're real sorry. So wow, that's why I say technically yes. Yeah, they, you know, it's it a was great, more it's, like one of those cush jobs where we're gonna say, why don't you find another job while you do nothing for us? <laughs> kind of situation. That's exactly right. Yeah, and, uh, 
Okay. And they were great, you know, yeah, like all cool. great people there. And, yeah. and, you know, they, they felt bad, you know, but at, at the same time, I, I understand it's, it's, it's business, it's life. Right. Uh, but they did right by me and that really gave me the time to think through what I wanted to do. And I had no idea. Hmm. Um, but you know, I had had this idea, uh, which I'd had many, many years ago. Uh, and it was like, you know, the idea was how, why is it so hard to find a guide to go do something cool? Okay. Yeah. You know, I knew the outdoors, I know fishing, I know camping, I know hiking. Um, but yet even for me, finding a guide that was going to give me a great, a great experience was so difficult and I knew what I was doing. So imagine someone who has no clue what they're doing. How right, on earth right. do they find the right guide? And, and, you know, with the age of the internet, uh, there's kind of a funny dynamic that's happening. Those who are great guides are terrible internet marketers. And those who <laughs> yeah, are great yeah. internet marketers make terrible guides. Right. Right. Um, and so if, if a guide is ranking really well on Google or doing a great job, uh, on SEO or things like that, it's probably not a good guide, right? He's probably, he's, he's in front of his computer and he's not on the yeah, water. That's you know? right. That's right. It's, and so it's, it's just made it worse. Water. Yeah. 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 So, so that's, that's why, you know, like originally the premise was like, let's, let's make it easy to get outdoors. And then I realized that there was this huge underserved marketplace. You know, there's 114 million Americans who view themselves as outdoorsy, want to do cool things in the outdoors, but don't really know how to even go about to do it. Right. Um, and so how do I bring the outdoors and the increased accessibility and these amazing experiences to them in order to create memories and that in, in turn will help save the environment one smile at a, at a time? I love that. That's a good goal. Right? Yeah. 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 That's amazing. Good for you. You know, we're, we're, we're 3,500 plus smiles in the making. Wow. So. <laughs> so those are all your, uh, your, your satisfied clients. That's awesome. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I mean, when, when a, a mother and her two and a half year old daughter get to go camping where they arrive and all they need is food, drink in their sleeping bag mm -hmm. and they have a guide who even cooks for them that night. But wow. you know, when, when, when they arrive, the tents are set up, the sleeping mats are out, the chairs are out, the hammocks are out. Mm. All of that is done for you. You're wow. basically arriving. That's a into, lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. I know. But, but you know what, like what's even harder is the takedown process because now everything's dirty. Right. Yeah, you're right. And, and so we take care of all that for you. And, and for her to tell me, you know, Tom, you gave me the opportunity to have this amazing experience in the outdoors with my two and a half year old and get her on the right path of understanding and enjoying nature. Like I can't ask for anything more. I can't do this on my own. I don't know what I'm doing yet with you. I felt comfortable. I got out there, you know, like my, uh, Tucker, who was, uh, her guide, uh, you know, is holding this little girl's hand and they're walking around exploring, you know, the, the flowers and the bugs and taking <laughs> sticks and poking things, you know, it's just yeah. an amazing opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And that's, and, and that's what we do. I love it. So now when you started the business, how long did it take you to get it up and running? Uh, it took me eight months. Okay. Eight months and then everything failed. So my first launch was a disaster. I knew nothing about technology. I knew nothing. Like I really didn't know how to pick people with te te you know, a technological and marketing background because that wasn't what I did. I mean, right, my, right, my right. world was numbers and the customer experience. Okay. So, you know, there's, there, there's no real analysis that can be done when you're standing in front of someone and they're telling you all this stuff and how they're going to code things. And you're like, oh, yeah, that sounds great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've been that guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. This is awesome. So you you're truly gonna, get my vision. You're, and then you're going to take care of everything and everything is going to be awesome. Okay. And then it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Better. Yeah. It's not. Right. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure you, you know, as you're promoting your, your podcast and, right, right. and trying to get things moving, like, you know, it's, it's difficult. It is. And, you know, and, and the thing is, is just because like one, uh, a certain strategy work for one person doesn't mean it's going to translate and work for everybody. No, right. no, Jeff. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> like you really need to understand each individual business in order to right. understand what's really going to work. And I don't know. It's just for me that, that, that was the hardest part. And, and I mean, I, I almost gave up, you know, we launched our first platform in December of 14. It was a disaster. Mm. Um, just totally fell apart and it was just bad. 
And yeah. so we had to start all over again. And Ugh. but but th- but this time I got smarter. Okay. Well, you I, uh, you learned you learned from the you know uh, the the first the the rehearsal. <laughs> yeah. I just wish it hadn't cost me as much money as it did. Oh yeah. Uh, I know. Looking at that because this is my third podcast, so the first one was mostly just for fun, but the second one I actually put in like businessy effort and hired people and uh, and wanted to make it like make money. And when I realized that that was not going to work and I had to start over, uh, <laughs> I was like, no, it's like you, you finally get to the top of the mountain. You think, OK, everything is going to be great. And then you're like, oh, I got to go back down again. Yeah. So that's been there, done that. That sucks. It that, Like for you, like what was that like? pit of your like uh, I'm sorry. Yes, did yeah. you experience that pit of your stomach yeah. feeling where it's just yeah. like yeah, yeah it's almost like you really have to go to the bathroom but you can't yes and it's just <laughs> it's just stuck there I know forever. that feeling <laughs> yeah yeah and it actually happened to me when I was on a Skype call with like uh I don't know six or seven other people and I was talking to this guy who was selling uh sort of like take your podcast to the next level and make it make money kind of situation and, and he said like two things. He was like, okay, so you have to nail your audio. And I had already kind of like figured that piece out about how to sound good. And I was like, okay, I got that. And then he's like, you got to nail your brand. And I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> and then somewhere along the line in that conversation, I realized I did not nail my brand and I had to start over. And that meant I, it was basically starting over from zero, you know, get a new domain, start over, do everything all, all over again. And I was like, uh, yes, pit of stomach. Ick. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, been uh, been there, done that. I know what you mean. Okay, so talk about um, what you did different on the second on the relaunch. Let's call it. Yeah. So so I, I, I learned from my mistakes. Right. But really, I did research, and I realized that um, I trust I trusted too easily because that was an sure. easy thing to, to do at Capital One. I mean, everyone you work with is brilliant. Sure. Um, and and they're brilliant, but they're brilliant all towards the same goal of being successful together. Right. Uh, whereas when you're working with third parties, they're all towards their own goal. Right. As long as they right? get paid. You're, right. As long, as long as they get paid, they're excited. So I had to find people who were excited about my mission in a genuine way that would actually be excited about working for this uh, for this transformational yeah, company. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Purpose. Thank you. And and once I was able to find that, which was really, really hard, then it was imagine. trust but verify. Right. Where Very I, good. I taught yes, myself military everything thing. there trust was. Verify. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, I taught myself as much as I could about all the analytics and all that stuff. Mm. And when they come into the meeting, be like, yeah, we had a great week. You know, we got a couple things going. And I'd be like, okay, so what actually did we do? Well, we did this, 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 and okay, well, what did that translate to? And I already had the answers. You knew how to ask the right questions this time around. Well, I, yeah, because I knew yeah. what the answers were. <laughs> even better. <laughs> and so, and so I'm like, actually, you didn't even go into the back end of the account once this week. So you're basically lying to my face telling me you did X, Y, and Z when you didn't. Uh, and that person wow. lasted about uh, I can, two weeks. I can see their face now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and but the thing is, is, is once the good ones realized that I was giving them leeway to do what they thought was best mm-hmm. for our mission, at the same time, I was going to measure them and, and hold them accountable to results. And, you know, they better come into the, to the conversation ready to speak about yeah. what has occurred and why. Because yeah. that was the big thing, right? This is the data we have, what happened and why. Mm. Why are we not selling it in, in the month of May? Like what happened? Right. Like, you know, this May we had a huge drop. We're like, what is going on? Right. And then miss peeling back the onion together and understanding, okay, well we had some big misses in the customer service side when it came to speed to answer on chat or on phone, you know, it's just all of those things. Cause, cause when you're running a company, there's, there's a million things that are going on each and every day. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it's hard when all I want to do is go fishing or go camping. <laughs> <laughs> it gives me heartburn. I'm, I'm like, yeah. guys, I'm, yeah. you know, like, yes, I'm intense, but I also like to relax. And I just like, can we pretend for a minute that, you know, we, uh, we understand what we're doing and how we're moving forward? 
Um, but I mean, you know, Jeff, it, it's, it, it's like anything. It's, if you're passionate about it and you work hard, you increase your chances of success. Mm. This is a tech startup. Yeah. There's a high probability of failure in right. tech startups. Right, 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 right. And that's okay. Yeah. And, and, and the fact that we're, I'm okay with failing makes us that much more likely to succeed because right. we, we take a step back and we can make the right decision about something. Right, right. Um, you know, we, we've got all of our eggs in this basket and we're plowing forward and we're, you know, we're going out and we're raising money and we're changing lives in the process. And, 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 and that's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah, we just tweak the system on a weekly basis and or a monthly basis and, and, and move forward. So, so you, I, I take it you finally found your, the, the, the type of, uh, employees that were able to at least get you to a place where you didn't have to start over cause you're still going, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I did. And, and, and I got fortunate, uh, that I got hooked up with an incubator, you know, like, oh, a tech nice. Incubator. Wow. Uh, that helps a this, lot. Yeah. But this is one that, that doesn't take a percentage of your company. They, oh, really? They really oh, just nice. help. Okay. Uh, but what's really neat about it is it, it created an ecosystem that I didn't have access to that had a lot of great individuals and not so great. Um, <laughs> and, and, right. and it's, but it's through the process of getting to know people that you can start testing them out. So most of the employees that I've hired full time started out on a contractual basis. That's a good idea. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. And then, and then we worked them in. Okay. We gave them more and more until we felt like, okay, this is the guy to do this. or This right. is the girl to do this. Right. That's uh, probably the best way to hire somebody because if you hire somebody like straight to a W2, uh, just from a resume and an interview, you have no clue what they're like doing work. Whereas if you hire them on a contract, say like a three month or a six month contract, you're going to know, <laughs> you're going to know. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because, okay. This is the kind of work when you're on audition, right? <laughs> that you're putting out. Right. So yeah. yeah. And it's not necessarily just, uh, they're, you know, on paper work. It's like, how are they in the office and how are they on the phone and how are they with me and how are they in meetings? You know, you get a feel for who they are. Absolutely. I, yeah. That's, that was one of the biggest things that I learned that I apply all, you know, to everything that we do. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's trial by fire. Um, this, <laughs> that this world and the uncertainties of this world, uh, is, it's just, it's what they are. And, and, and it's not an easy place to work in. You know, we work hard, but we play hard. We have a great time. Uh, my team's going scalloping in two weeks. Unfortunately, I can't go. Scalloping? Um, Does that mean looking for scallops? Yeah, <laughs> looking for scallops and then opening them up and then having a nice barbecue on a beach. So, ah, that sounds uh, awesome. Yeah, and they're doing that so we can get some footage to help promote it. The season opens in two weeks. So, you know, we've got a. they're going to go have a great time. But then there's a really quick turnaround on those videos so that we can promote it and really and really just get the ball moving. Gotcha. So you're also selling guides. Is that, is that right? I'm saying uh, on this one sheet here to talk about the scrum process. Ah, yeah. So we're the scrum process. Um, Sounds like a rugby game. Yeah. It's so it, it's actually a rugby term. Right. Uh, right. The, the, the scrum is when everyone is interlocked moving forward in the right in the same direction. Okay. Uh, so in January we implemented the scrum process. There's a good book. It's called elements of scrum. Uh, I highly recommend it. Um, and, and essentially what it, what it did is it allowed us in six months to do more with our brand, our company and our mission than we did in the previous year and a half. Whoa. Cause it aligns everyone to the common goal and all, they are actually that the scrum team decides what work they do to move towards that common goal. Mm, 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 mm. It kind of and breaks it, down those walls about everybody's kind of moving in their own kind of direction sort of thing. Yeah, correct. Well, A, they hold each other accountable right. across the board. So okay. they have they, – they're every morning at 8.15, they're on the phone for 10 minutes. Mm. This is what I'm doing today. This is what happened yesterday. This is what I didn't get accomplished that I want that I should have. And here's why, um, I meet with them once a week and they get to tell me what they did not what they're doing. 
Okay. What they did. But what they, but what what they, they actually accomplished. accomplished. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I hold only one individual accountable who's the uh, – what's called the product owner. I hold them accountable for the entirety of the scrum. Like, like are, are your priorities the right ones? And, you know, what actual change? What's driving the bottom line? Like, how many more trips are getting booked because of the work that you're doing? Right. Nice. It's – it's 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 just the way that it works. I can now focus my time not on micromanaging a team, which I hate doing, right? Uh, but on, on letting them micromanage each other. And it's and I shouldn't use micromanage; it's got a negative con- con- connotation to it. But just holding each other accountable and supporting each other in the mission of moving forward together. Right, right. Keep them on task and moving in the right direction as a as a single unit. Sounds yeah, very it, military, actually. <laughs> it, well, I mean, it it kind of is, and just in the bit, sense yeah. that everyone knows what they need to get done, which is really day, you know. amazing, you know, because we've all had those jobs where you kind of just, I don't know. Uh, the last time I had a job uh, in L.A., it was um, I was basically there to to be there. Right. So the the big downside of this job that the the person who interviewed me um, said, um, okay, there's a lot of downtime and we know that and we're okay with it. And, you know, you can study or you can read or, you know, you can, uh, you know, we just mostly need you available for when people need help because the other IT person is already really busy and, and not really IT and has a whole other job. So you're here to help out the customers, which, you know, are the, the other folks that work there at the bank office. But, you know, you, you show up to work and you already know that, you know, <laughs> there, there, <laughs> were, there were several days <laughs> that I did absolutely nothing. You know, come in, uh, you know, do my, uh, my little tasks that are my daily tasks and then sit there and read or study for some certificate that I'm working on and then do lunch and then come back wow. and do that again until five o'clock and leave. Ugh, uh, there's something that just sucks your soul about doing something like that. So at when, yeah, that sounds terrible. It is. It was. It was awful. <laughs> So next time, you know, people warn me there's going to be a lot of downtime. I'm like, mm, yeah, no, <laughs> I can't do that now. So yeah, the the team has to stay motivated. And right. That's my job. Yeah, they have to stay on task, and there has to be some type of pressure. And 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 when right. the team's looking at you, and you said it would take you two hours to do this type of a project, and you're on hour four, and now it's going to take time away from other things that's going to make them not not deliver it kind of causes a little bit of a he- of a he- of a hesitation on the right. part of the uh you know the team member and, and at the same time you know all of their successes are all rewarded together right so if someone delivers on something that may have been really complicated you know the whole team is so pumped for them and and, and everyone is there to help throughout the process because they are one unit Mm. and you're right. It is kind of like the military. I've got one designer who's an amazing designer. I've got one videographer who's amazing at what he does. I've got, um, uh, two tech guys who code. I've got someone from the customer service team. I've got someone, um, you know, with a very diverse background on, on paid advertising. Um, and these guys are all working together. These guys and girls are all working together, utilizing each other's strengths and teaching each other more about their weaknesses mm. and just really going forward in the mission. And it's right. just all, it's just and it's amazing to see. And they decide. Right. They really do. Yeah, what's yeah. most important. If I want something done, I got to go through them. I'm like, guys, can you please do this? And here's why. And let me show you. Mm. And if I don't convince them, they're not going to do it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, when I was in the military, when uh, when I knew things were really clicking in that what, what you're talking about there and trying to get, you know, whatever done uh, and you're under a time crunch or whatever um, and you've got that small focus team, um, I knew as a boss leader manager that I, I had done my job when I saw people sort of like say, OK, I'm done. What uh, who needs help? Right. And maybe it's not even t- necessarily their specialty, but they're they're pitching in to because whatever it is that they were working on in their specialty is done now and they can help somebody else. And they start, you know, at least 
you know, going as far as they can, you know, and, and pitching in and helping out and so, sort of like getting over that. That's not my job kind of mindset. Yeah, because it's the team. And it's the team, team that is successful right. succeeds together. Amen. So That's great. Yeah. So now talk a little bit about how these outdoors adventure adventures um, can you can use them to make more sales. So I take it you're taking out uh, businesses as groups. Uh, yeah. So so I, part of what we do, you know, we're focused on individual consumer, but we also have a corporate angle to what we do. So we'll, you know, let's say it's a group of fifty people who want to go out in a sandbar and have a team fun day. Well, we do that. We'll take you out all out to a sandbar and you can have a team fun day and we set it up. Um, but like specifically for sales, what we realized is, is we have this one guy, you know, he, he kept coming back. And we're like, man, you really like to fish. He goes, no, you're my ace in the hole. We're like, well, what do you mean ace in the hole? He goes, no, no, no. Like you guys don't get it. Like when I'm trying to get a prospect to meet with me and they don't and they keep saying no to dinners and no to a round of golf and no to a variety of things. It's magic what happens to their calendar when I say, do you want to go fishing on so-and-so date? Or I'm like, really? Yeah. He's like, yeah. Because nobody yeah, asks he, you to go fishing for work. <laughs> right, right. And he's like, you know, A, they say yes. And B, he goes, Tom, you know what? I get to sit next to someone that I haven't really known. And I get to know them in an environment that naturally – relaxes you mm. naturally brings your guard down mm. we get to get deep and personal about ourselves and our families and our lives and then if i don't if i'm unable to sell him on the benefits of the product that i that that, that i have and that me as a person and i will be there for them throughout this entire process if I can't create that bond, then I'm in the wrong job. Right. Because you guys make it so easy for me to show up, yeah. get on, go have fun and get off. Like I just, you know, that's why he uses us. No, and so I get that it. gave yeah. us the idea. It's like, oh my gosh, like we have a huge market opportunity here. For sure. Yeah, because basically the environment is your primer. Exactly. The <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, that's that. I, I had never thought of that. Well, obviously, you hadn't either until he <laughs> told you. That's amazing. Yeah. I, you know what? If I, I've never had a sales job, but if somebody invited me to go fishing, I would definitely say yes. Just make yeah. sure you bring sunscreen, obviously. So obviously, yeah. you know that and a good hat, right? Well, and you know, when you go through our booking process online, we'll send you an email with everything you need to bring. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And then and then obviously our captain always has some on hand just in case. Right, right. You know, uh when I was uh I was stationed in Florida at Tyndall Air Force Base in Panama City. Um okay, one of yeah. the one of the guys uh there was a chief and that's like an E nine enlisted guy. Um he was so cool. I mean, just like the coolest guy you could ever work with in four. And I didn't know this, but he uh, he invited me to sit in his boat for a fishing tournament during work. <laughs> it was a it was a, a sponsored fishing tournament uh, for the military, right? So yeah, and he invited me to be hang out with him in in the boat. And everybody's coming to me. He was like, "You're hanging out with the chief." <laughs> I was like, "This is a really big deal." <laughs> And that's uh, awesome. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, I had a blast. I didn't you know, it was really I mean, I fished when I was a kid, um, but I never really got into it as a beyond, say, like tween years. Right. So I never had any adult sort of like casting proficiency at all. Right. And we were doing this sort of like a. Uh, Fishing that required a very accurate cast. So okay. we were, we were uh, floating around looking for bass in a bass boat. And there were all, it was almost like we were in a submerged forest. Yeah. So, so you're basically doing sight casting. Yeah. Go, go, going after them under the weed banks and all right. that stuff. Oh my God. Is that, <laughs> I was, you know, I, I thought, you know, it was going to be your typical zoom. You know, and then wait, right? <laughs> and then maybe you reel it in, maybe not. But there's lots of beer and sandwiches and things like that. Um, that's my idea of fishing. He was amazing. I he could put that 
that little lure wherever he wanted it in the tightest spots. He was just like, he could have had a TV show. <laughs> well, I mean, if you think about it, your, uh, your chief was, was what we do, right? We put yeah. you with a guide. So your chief was your guide and he knows yes. what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when we're fishing the mangroves or something like that and, and you want to get a cast in a tight spot, the guy just takes the rod from you, throws it in the right spot, and, and hands then gives you the it rod back. To you. back. Yeah, that happened a lot to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he saw me cast like twice. He's like, "Give me that," because <laughs> <laughs> you know he wasn't there to teach me. We were we were supposed to be having fun, and fun we did have. But yeah, uh, he learned right away that I was not an expert caster. <laughs> but hey, we both had a blast, and I think I got a sunburn, but we still had a really good time. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and there's nothing like the outdoors. I, no. I mean, oh, you're right. You know, even my bad stories about the outdoors are great stories. Yeah. You and know? A, any day outdoors is better than a day in an office for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, like your experience taking kids out and how that helps, uh, improve their education. Yeah. So, um, that's another good question. Uh, there's a lot of studies that have been done recently that are focused on the benefits of the outdoors with children. And okay. the reason they're doing them is because kids these days. Yeah, they don't get out. They don't get out. At all. You know, you used to ride your bike across your neighborhood. Yeah. And, uh, you know, around the corner, maybe a couple miles away. Now kids can barely play in the front yard without parents freaking out. I know. Um, and world. for the, you know. For good reasons. And, yeah, no, it's 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 the same sad, old world. It's just now truth. we have social media that's going to tell us when something horrible happens to someone up in Alaska. So right. um, it's not that it's necessarily happening more. It's just that we're more aware of the dangers and we're less risk tolerant than we used to be right? Uh, because it wasn't in our face every single day. But anyway, so, you know, with that in mind, there's a lot of research being done Um Nature Valley. Are you familiar with Nature Valley? The kind of the, the granola bar? Yeah. They made an amazing commercial. I mean, just like heart wrenching commercial that talks to three different generations about uh, what their favorite pastime is and what their memories were. So it starts with the older generation. They're talking about their days outdoors and the most amazing experiences they had and laying on, under the shade of an oak tree for, you know, 10 hours of the day. And then the bell, they could hear their mom yelling and screaming and they would just <laughs> run home. Right. You know, to to the next generation where they're talking about doing, you know, awesome activities with their parents. And then it cuts to, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine year olds. And they're talking about how their favorite activity is games, computer games, phone games, and they play five, six hours a day. And they're like talking about this with the same passion that I talk about the outdoors. Yeah. Ouch. And and the yeah but the yeah i mean that's it like the ouch part is they they're asked about going outside like ooh bugs but you, i mean you right. need to look up this commercial like it it will literally it it will rip at your heartstrings and it's because of an environment that we've created for them so all these studies are being done right now about the impact of kids and the outdoors and and basically trying to show the benefits to the parents not just say it's good to be outside no it, right. it's let's prove it so yeah, yeah. Uh, this one, it, you know, this one study, they, they took, um, a bunch of high school owners and, uh, two classes, um, that had, you know, the same test scores. One class went home for the weekend and one class was taken on a three day hike camping trip. Oh, nice. Uh, and then they all had the same test when they came back from the trip or from the weekend. Uh, the people who went outside were 60% more creative than the other class. Sixty percent. Sixty percent more creative. These wow. are the exact same, the exact same kids, two classes with the same aptitude test scores and all that stuff. And they come back into the classroom and one side is sixty percent more creative. Yeah. Thirty some percent more focused. Nature I mean, is it's good just, for your brain. <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's good for your brain. It's good for your heart. It's good for your body. Yeah. It's good for your blood that's inside of you. I mean, there's there 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 are so many benefits, but one of the ones really that they were focusing on was that creativity aspect of things. Right. Now I'm not against video games. I played video games when I was a kid. I, not not Nintendo or or anything like that. But I played. <laughs> I remember Strat the, Yeah. Yeah. 
I I played strategy games online like Sim City One and I remember all that Sim kind of City, stuff. Like yeah. Way 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 back in the day. Um, and I enjoyed that, but you know, there was a time and a place. Um, in the summer, I was outside all day. I was either working, right, right. Cut, you know, cutting grass or whatever, or hanging out with friends and playing playing sports, do, doing that kind of stuff. And playing so kick the can. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, <laughs> t- today it's about educating parents on the need to control that, not stop it. Right. Because there is, you know, there are benefits to to you know being able to multitask and being able to have incredible hand eye coordination and reflexes and things like that. That's all great. Yeah. But you, we just need a balance in life, yeah. and that's what it is with kids. It's like if all you feed a kid is ice cream, they're all they're going to want is ice cream, and then you know they're not going to be healthy. And that's just, you know that's the same thing with the outdoors and balancing technology. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I bet like. Um I don't think you would necessarily, now I'm not a parent, so I can't really talk to this about authority, with authority, but I remember uh, when I went camping uh, with my parents as a kid, I always had those distractions in case it rained or it was cold or for whatever reason, but... I always wanted to be outside (laughs) sort of. So for me, the little toys that I brought from home, be those like Legos or my Coleco football games or just playing cards with people, you know, uh, or something like that. That was always sort of like a backup sort of strategy for when I couldn't go out in the woods and stomp around or ride a mini bike or something like that. Um, Yeah. So I think they both have their place, but I wonder if like getting exposure to the outdoors sort of like would be uh, almost like a self-limiting thing because it's so much more fulfilling where, you know, (sighs) the, 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 the other, well, I don't know, maybe they're so addicted. It's going to take more work. (laughs) No, no, no. But like, I think you're right. You know, those things were a backup, but I mean, even now today, like they're not, that's, they're not a backup, but no. like people will go to the restaurant with kids. Like there's nothing I hate more than a kid sitting there on an iPhone at a restaurant. Right. No, I know. I'm with you. Like what, like what happened to that conversation with your parents or disciplining if he's being, if he or she's being bad, like, right. you know, I, I have three kids and I, I, and I'm not the greatest father in the world. I don't get some award or whatever, Right. but I love my kids and I want to show them what people consider sometimes the old way of doing things. And, um, just because I just think it's better and it just involves balance and discipline. And, um, this is just part of it. You know, you have to balance life, right? It's, it's, it's the same at, at any age. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I, you know, again, when we were kids, like, like you were saying, um, my dad, you know, one of his favorite jokes would be like, uh, Get out of the house. Go play tag on the interstate bridge. Right. Right. <laughs> and they <laughs> they more or less just kicked us out of the house. Right. You know, get out. And, you know, you were right. We would like we had like this sort of like set range, you know, uh, defined for different ages. Right. Um, you can't go further than the, the YMCA this way. You can't go further than the Troutner's grocery store that way. You know, um, other than that, you know, you're out. So I get it that we're, uh, we're in a different world. So there are, you know, obviously new and interesting challenges to being parents and, and trying to get them outdoors. But uh, obviously it's worth the effort. Yeah, it, it, it really is. And, and that's just, you know, part of what all of us are doing that are in this space and that care about the future generations yeah. and we're all doing it differently, you know, right. um, I, 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 trekkers and my mission is to help get people outdoors period. Yeah. And that's what we're doing. So, and, and we're going to educate about the outdoors and we're going to, you know, continue down this path of, of making it awesome experiences and creating memories. So as we wrap up here, uh, let's just go through your, how folks can get in touch with you. So your website is www.itrekkers.com, itrekkers.com. And then they can find all the other, the Skype and the Twitter and the Instagram and the Facebook 
email, phone, YouTube. That's all there. All, <laughs> it's all there on the website. Absolutely. It's all yeah. that. We'll, we'll link up your, uh, your website for sure on the show notes. So this has been a blast and uh, I'll give you the last word. What do you need to finish on? Well, you know, our conversation's kind of gone all, you know, across uh, a lot of different areas, but you know, at the end of the day, for those listening out there, it, life is about balance. And in order to have balance, we have to incorporate the outdoors in some way, shape, or form. That's where we have originally come from. Right. That is where we need to go back to. Um, in 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 the right harmony and you know with everything else. So, um, if you yourself spend too much time on your phone, or have, you have kids who are spending too much time indoors, challenge yourself to get out a little bit more. Go walk in your neighborhood. At the base of a mountain, like Jeff does. Yeah. Uh, hit the water like I do. Seven degrees. Yeah. <laughs> True story. <laughs> uh, you know, at that point, you've got your, you know, the night walks if you can sleep uh, under the moon. So there you go. Yes. Take uh, midnight walks, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, yeah. Let's just kind of take a take take stock of our own lives and 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 what we do today. Um, and see how we can better balance things out. No, I love it. That's a great message, and I, I, I'm I'm down with your mission and your purpose awesome. in, in the world. Yes, I'm going to check out Eye Trekkers. Do you have any uh, uh, guides in in the Vegas area? There's tons of stuff to do. We do not yet. No, we're uh, we're right You're, now across the whole state of Florida. Okay. Um, and then we'll probably attack the southeast of the U.S. and then go straight out west and bridge the middle. I love it. So. Some, Hopefully we're not too far away <laughs> from, <laughs> from Vegas. Someday, someday soon. <laughs> thanks, Tom. Exactly. This has been a blast. I appreciate uh, you hey, being on my show. Jeff, thanks so much. I, I really appreciate it. All right. Have a good one. Hey, you too. Thanks for taking the time to ride along with us on another episode of Vroom Vroom Veer. For podcast info and show notes, be sure to head over to vvveer.com. That's triple V double E R.com. Man, that's fun to say. And we'll catch up with you next time here on Vroom Vroom Veer.